We're going to talk about integration by parts. Have you ever wondered why there's no such thing as a product rule for integrals, for antiderivatives? Isn't that annoying? And then you go to class and they give you this very complicated rule about u dv du, and then you have no clue what's going on. Well, I am going to show you an easy method of doing integration by parts. And let's, I think the best way to do it is with an example like uh, this one. How about some horrible looking product? Here we have a product of two functions. I'm going to put parentheses around them. 3x and e to the x. Problem is, there's no such thing as a product rule. So what do we do? Well, here's an interesting way of doing it. And this is the method that you can find, you can read about in appliedcalc.org, which is about the best textbook there is in the world. We're going to make two columns. I'm going to call this D. D stands for derivative and I, which stands for integral. In the D column, we're going to put one of these functions. Uh, the, the one to put in the D column, you kind of learn by experience. Generally speaking, if you have a polynomial like 3x, that goes in the D column. And in the I column, the other, the other factor, e to the x. And this method says, if you don't like integrating this product, you can get an easier product by differentiating one of them and integrating the other one. For instance, if I differentiate 3x, I get 3. And if you integrate e to the x, you get e to the x again. And you must admit that this product is easier to integrate than that product. And all integration by parts says is we can write the answer down right, right away from here. What I do is multiply this by that, so I'm going to connect them with a line. And so I can start writing the answer. 3x times e to the x. And then, as promised, we're going to have an easier interval. We're going to take the, this little product and integrate that, except, so I'll put an integral sign, and except I'm going to put a minus in front, which says that I'm going to integrate negative the product. So next to this goes minus the integral of 3e e to the x. You must admit that that is a much easier interval to do than that, because we can write down what the answer is. 3x e to the x again. The integral of a constant times e to the x is a constant times e to the x. And we're done. Wasn't that easy? In fact, if you're feeling lazy, you might even make it easier than this. I don't know what could really be easy, but let's try to make it even easier. Let's get really lazy and say, I don't want to do that product either. So I'm going to erase all of this, start again, and do one step once, once more. Take the derivative of this, take the integral of that. But I don't want to do that product. I'm too lazy to integrate that. Well, do it again. Take the derivative once more, and you get 0. Take the integral of e to the x once again, and you get e to the x. Now, 0 times e to the x is really easy to integrate. I think even I know how to integrate that, because it's 0. So what do we do now? How do we get the answer? Multiply those two again. And again, multiply these two. And then when you have to go across, well, there's nothing there. There's, there's this complication about the sign. Remember, there was a negative sign here, so that goes there again. And if you take a negative twice, it turns out you're going to get a plus. And the easy way to remember this is to start on the top with a plus sign and write alternating signs all the way down, plus, minus, plus. Then you can write the answer down, no work. The answer then is 3x times e to the x. minus 3 times e to the x, and plus 0, which I don't bother to write down. The integral of 0 is 0 plus a constant. So once again, I have the answer, but this time without having to even do an integral. And you have to admit that this method is a lot easier than the UDV method that you might have been taught by those inferior textbooks. 
not like this textbook, of course. So to illustrate that, I'm going to do another example that's even harder. And uh, well, why don't we do this? Instead of just 3x, let's try something awful like x squared minus 1. And instead of just e to the x, let's try e to the 2x plus 1. Now that looks quite unpleasant. In fact, uh, that might be regarded as punishment by many people in calculus classes who have to do the traditional method with u and dv. But with this method, oh my god, it's so easy. Into the d column, throw the polynomial wheel, x squared minus 1. Into the i column, throw the exponential, e to the 2x. Now, differentiating x squared minus 1 is no big deal. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of negative 1 is 0, so that's just 2x. Do it again, you get 2, and do it yet again, and you get 0. And we need to go any further, because we have a 0 in the d column. In the i column, we have to integrate e to the 2x plus 1. What's that? Hmm. Now, I know the integral of e to the x is e to the x. You might, if you were, if you were reading the, the calculus book, Applied Calc, which you can read about there, you might learn a shortcut to integrate e to the 2x plus 1. The answer is, it's simply e to the 2x plus 1, but divided by 2. You can remember that by thinking of what's the derivative of 2x plus 1 plus 2. And if you integrate it again, you divide by 2 yet again. So you'll have e to the 2x plus 1 divided by 4. Once more, so we level with a 0, you get e to the 2x plus 1 divided by 4 times 2, which is 8. That's it. Now we can write the answer down. All we do is write these little slanted lines, which is kind of fun. Put pluses and minuses. Again, uh, and on the bottom row, there's really an integral going on, but that integral is going to be zero, so you can kind of ignore it in this problem, and then write the answer down. So I'm just going to write the answer down by simply copying down the terms. So the first term in the answer is x squared, plus x squared minus 1 times e to the 2x plus 1 over 2. Then there's a minus, this times that, minus 2x multiplied by e to the 2x plus 1, divided by 4. Then there's a plus, this, this third product, 2 times e to the 2x plus 1, divided by 8. Now, there's a plus c at the end of this all. Then you can simplify it if you like, but I'm going to go. I don't like simplifying things, but you can, you know, can cancel things here and there play around and make it look right, nice and simple. But the gist of this is, no matter how many steps you have to do, this method of integration by parts makes it a lot easier, you must admit. Now let me show you what happens when you don't get a zero there, because you're not always fortunate enough to end up with a zero after repeatedly differentiating something. So what I'm going to try is something involving a natural logarithm. Natural logarithms are not great fun to integrate, but I'm going to make it worse. I'm going to throw something in and as, as, a, as a factor and then multiply x plus 1 times natural logarithm. Your first impulse will be, oh, that's easy. Let's just make a d column, make an i column, throw the x plus 1 here, differentiate it a couple of times. You get 1, then you get 0. Then put the natural log x there. Uh-oh. What goes here? Now, you might know what the antiderivative of log x is. In fact, if you did know, let's even pretend you knew that. That's, in fact, x times natural log x minus x. But then what goes there? You'd have to do it again. That's even worse. So the question is, well, this doesn't seem to work. Something's wrong here. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Well, 
back to the drawing board. So back to the drawing board might mean perhaps we should switch things around. Perhaps we should do the counter intuitive thing and put the natural log x in the d column, which would force us to put the x plus 1 in the i column. Then when you differentiate, we know what happens when you differentiate natural log x, you get 1 over x. Now if we differentiate it again, it's going to get a little bit worse. It's going to be minus 1 over x squared. And if you keep going, it'll get even worse than that. Minus 2, plus 2 over x cubed, and it'll get worse and worse and worse. So let's stop while we're ahead. Let's not let it get out of hand. And we have to take the antiderivative of the integral of x plus 1, which is x squared over 2 plus x. And that's it. Now you must admit that this product can be integrated quite easily because it's a polynomial times a polynomial, or it's 1 over x times a polynomial. Not too bad. No logs. So let's stop right here, set it up, take product, natural log x times that, put a plus here, put a minus here, and then we have to integrate the second product. So this time we can simply write the answer down, but we'll set it up as a as the original expression equal to something involved in an integral that's easier to do. So this gives us, if I can get my right product pen here, this product multiplied by natural log x minus that integral, which is a product again of these two things. Now wait a minute, I know we don't have a product rule, but we can simply multiply this out and then integrate it piece by piece. So let's rewrite the whole thing over again. x squared over 2 plus x times natural log x minus the integral of what? Well, if we multiply this by that, we're dividing by x, so this becomes x over 2. If we multiply 1 over x by x, we simply get 1, and there's a dx. But I know what that is. The antiderivative of x over 2 is what? It's x squared over 2 times 2, which is x squared over 4. So where should I write the answer? Let me work up here. And this becomes finally x squared over 2 plus x copying it over again, minus that. Remember, we have to integrate that, so it's minus x squared over 4. Minus times a plus is a minus, minus x plus c. And that is all there is to it. Now, it might have filled up a lot of board space, but it wasn't as terrible as all that. In the sequel to this, we're going to do things like integrate functions involving trig functions that involving sines and cosines, products of exponentials and sines and cosines. All of that can be done using this very simple technique. So remember, integration by parts is easy when you know the secret method of doing it. And see you next time.